Hello lovely people, welcome back to the farm. Today is the last really cold day that we're gonna have for a while. We're gonna be up into the high 40s, low 50s, even up into the 60s this next week. I'm looking forward to the warmer weather. It harkens to spring. We're almost there. We've already had daylight savings or the end of it. So that's spring ahead instead of fall back. But all of this springness in the air has got me thinking about hatching. So that is what we're going to be doing today. And I'm going to be sharing a method with you that we've learned using uh, this method with our quail eggs to increase the hatch rate. Now there's a lot of people that frown on what I'm about to do, but we've had really good success with the quail eggs. And I can only believe that it's going to increase the hatch rate with our chicken eggs. So stay tuned for a future video where we talk about the hatch rate that we get with our chicken eggs. Now some of these eggs are up to 10 days old, so keep that in mind. If you were doing eggs that were fresh that day, laid by the chicken, going into the incubator, or some people say you can hatch up to seven day old eggs. Some people go, 10's okay too, but your hatch rate decreases with every day that passes. So you want to get those eggs when they're fresh. The big thing that people frown upon is dunking them in water. We want to get these eggs hydrated and we want to make sure that they're viable for hatching. All at the same time, you can do this simply by placing them in the water and seeing if they float. We've got one that does not. Okay, so we've got our first egg that does not float. That is good. If they drop to the bottom, that means they are viable. Now you don't want them to just drop onto the bottom and float like this. You want them to actually lay down over on their side. So what I'm gonna do is set it in there carefully and watch what happens. Okay, that one laid over down on its side. Normally, what you wanna do is you wanna find eggs that are uniform. You want to find the average size egg and then match up all the other eggs that you're gonna be hatching to that one. So you don't want extra long pointy eggs and then extra big bulbous fat eggs. You want them to be an average size egg. Now this one is a little pointy. Normally I would take this out. However, because we're not even gonna come close to filling all six trays that I could put in the incubator, we're gonna go ahead and use all the eggs that I have at my disposal. And we're gonna see what sort of hatch rate we get with eggs that are up to 10 days old. Now some of these eggs are three to four days old at the most, so that's pretty good. The other thing that we're running into is we've got a whole bunch of dirty eggs. At least half these eggs are too dirty to hatch as they are. So we want to give them a chance to wash off any of that gunk that they've got on them, get cleaned up a little bit. But the trick with doing this is you don't want to get them wet and scrub them. Wet plus scrubbing equals washing off that protective coating. So you can get an egg wet or you can kind of brush it off, but you can't do both at the same time. Otherwise you wash off that protective coating. Scrubbing the egg with water is what exposes it to all sorts of bacteria and infection with viruses or diseases or anything like that. So we want to avoid that. So I have our first tray here, and that tray was a little light, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some more eggs here. So far they are all they are all dropping to the bottom. None of them are floating, which means they're all viable for hatching. If you want to get your incubator running and warmed up, generally they say 24 hours in advance, but I don't think that's necessary. I mean, you do what you want to do, but I've normally just warmed it up about an hour before I start hatching, and that's plenty of time to get it up to temperature and to get it uh, evenly balanced inside as far as temperature goes. Okay, that's enough eggs for now. What I want to do next is I want to just simply watch, watch these eggs as they kind of, the stuff on the outside is slowly just falling off. You can kind of lightly touch them and see if any of it will just kind of brush off, not brush off, but come off as you as you tap it. Very lightly touch it. Also, you wanna watch for any bubbles. If you see bubbles, just lightly touch the bubble and then 
remember what egg that bubble was on and make sure that there isn't a crack, like an invisible hairline crack that you can't see that forms another bubble. That's an egg that you don't want to try to incubate. So if we see another bubble form on any of those eggs that I've found bubbles on, we're going to take them off. Now, you can leave the eggs in the water for a good amount of time, but I would say five minutes is plenty of time to get them hydrated and watch for any that are kind of sitting like this. Okay, if you've got an egg sitting up like this, that's not a good sign. I mean, it's not terrible, but you really want to see that egg lay down flat or as flat as possible as they're an oval shape. When you've got an egg with one end sticking up, that means there's a little extra air in there. They've dehydrated a bit. And so you're just allowing them to soak up some water. You're allowing them to bring some extra moisture in through the shell to rehydrate them. And then ultimately, what that's going to allow them to do is be that much more viable for hatching. Now, this isn't the only part of this. Now, we've put dirty eggs in this water. That is something that you want to avoid if you don't do the second step. So the second step to making your eggs as viable as possible and increasing that hatch rate is to sanitize them. So once we bring them out of the water, I'm just gonna give them a light spritzing and you're not going to heavily spray them. So you do wanna make sure that that bottle is set on just a, a light spritzer so that the eggs don't get soaked. You are gonna have some drops that'll form here and there, but what you're trying to avoid is a heavy soaking. But having that alcohol in the mixture, that's also going to help to dry them more quickly. With this 50% Listerine, it's the yellow colored Listerine with the alcohol in it, it's 50% Listerine, 50% water mix. And this is going to just kill any germs, it's gonna kill any bacteria, any viruses, or at least 99.9% .9 of them, and make our eggs that much more viable for hatching. We've had great success with this method with our quail eggs. We were getting hundreds, I mean, we got hundreds of eggs that we hatched at a time, that we incubated at a time. And what happened was we got a, uh, about a 75 to one time we got 90% hatch rate. So anywhere in there, so we'll just say we got about an 83% hatch rate on average, which is really good. And by the way, that was with sometimes up to two week old eggs. I'm going to just go ahead and leave these in here for a little bit longer while we talk through the next steps. After we get them out of the water, we're going to move them where they can dry. We are going to allow them to completely air dry before we move them into the incubator because with any sort of water, with any sort of moisture on the shell, when you move them into a fully warmed up, a fully preheated incubator, that can actually harm the internal elements of the eggs. Water will help conduct the heat. The higher the humidity, the higher the temperature feels. That increases the wet bulb temperature. So you know how when you've got a lot of moisture in the air, it feels even hotter. When it's drier, it actually feels cooler. Now because these trays had dirty eggs in them, I'm not going to be using these until they are thoroughly washed and sanitized because we don't want to have any crossover. Once these eggs are set in the new trays and they're spritzed, we don't want to have any of the old contaminating material that would be on these eggs to come in contact with those. One more thing that's very important that I cover with you is which side goes up. You want the rounded, the more rounded side to be up and the pointed side to be down. Now sometimes that can be a little difficult to see. This one, it's very difficult to tell which side is the more rounded side and which side is the more pointed side. So, in this case, this is an egg that you would normally not want to use. Again, I'm going to use all the eggs. This is a bit of an experiment, by the way. Uh, we're gonna see which eggs incubate better. Now, if these eggs, if they don't take and they turn out to not be 
good eggs for incubating in the future, we'll know that for sure. This is advice that's pretty common there, out there on the interwebs. You'll find that they say any irregularly shaped eggs, like this one has an irregular shape to it. It's not a nice smooth shape. Um, there's a little bit of a, of a divot or a dimple in it. But again, you can tell that this is the more pointed end, this is the more round end. And we're gonna go ahead and use this because why not? We've got plenty of space. Another thing that I would recommend that you do or that you avoid is having the eggs touching. So some of these eggs are so large that setting eggs in between in these rows, this egg is now touching this egg. We just wanna avoid that so that if there is any contamination on one egg, it doesn't cross over and cross contaminate another egg. And even though we weren't able to fill up six trays and we weren't even able to get a full three trays, that's fine because I actually don't have enough room in this incubator. That's one of the downfalls that I found with this incubator is you could fill all the trays. You could get six trays full of eggs. When you move the eggs from the trays into the hatching box where they'll sit in lockdown until as many have hatched and the, the time for hatching has uh, passed. I don't have a large enough hatching box to fit more than probably two and a half trays. So this is actually perfect. And now all we have to do is wait for them to dry and then they can go in the incubator. We'll get to that in just a second here. This is our GQF 1502 Sportsman incubator. We love this incubator. It has worked fantastic for us. Uh, there's couple of issues that I have with it. First of all, when you're changing the temperature on it, it changes very, very slowly. Now, you shouldn't need to take, change the temperature on it unless you're uh, hatching something like an ostrich egg, which we haven't had to do yet, but it's set from the factory at, I think, 100 degrees. You can easily change that down to 99.5, which is where I like to incubate eggs at. And then, the other issue, like I said earlier, was the hatching box. When you come to lock down your eggs, you put all your eggs in your hatching box and you're gonna lock them down, is that there's not enough room for if you had incubated all the eggs that you could fit on the tray. That's, in my mind, kind of a serious design flaw. They should have at least an add-on so that you can ha lock down and hatch more eggs at the same time. I did try to create another hatching box that I could slide in there. I just used some corrugated plastic and cut it, and it sort of worked. But, again, that is something that I had to make. It's a DIY thing that I created for this, and it wasn't perfect. Even after two or three iterations of trying to get it right, it wasn't perfect. It would be nice if they offered for, you know, even for 30 bucks more, I would pay for a, a hatching box that would fit in one of the trays so that when we came time, when it came time to switching the eggs out, then we have no issues at all. When you're setting up your incubator, you're going to be placing sponges. What these do is they allow more surface area for water to spread across and for air flow to flow across, which adds more humidity to the air. You may only need to use one sponge. I'm gonna start out with two and we'll adjust from there. We want the working temperature of the incubator to be between 45 to 55% during the primary phase. During the last phase of hatching, we want the temperature to rise to between 55 and 65%. Some say 70%, it's gonna depend. You look for information that you can find on the particular eggs that you're hatching. I'm going to stick with what the GQF 1502 Sportsman recommends. Now that we've got all of our eggs in there, we're gonna monitor the temperature and we're gonna monitor the humidity. So the internal temperature is 83 degrees right now and rising. 
Set temperature 99.5, internal temperature 83.4. Humidity is at 42%, so that's really good. But as quickly as that humidity has gotten up to 82, 83%, whatever it was, I'm thinking that we're gonna have too high humidity in here. So now it's already 86% humidity. So we're going to have to open up some of these holes here. So this one is open. One of the things that we can do is after we've opened up all of the port holes on this, on the back and on the front, if it still is rising and it gets above 55%, can always take one or both of those sponges out. That will decrease the area, the surface area that water and air can come in contact with each other and that will bring the humidity down. Now if I've taken both of the sponges out and I still have a problem with humidity being too high, I can also cover a portion of the tray with plastic or cellophane wrap. See it's already at 54%. That's going to continue to rise. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and take one of the sponges out right now. So with one of those sponges out, that should decrease the humidity. Well, we're already back up to 54%. I think I'm going to leave this for a little while, see if it just needs to kind of level out, balance out, go through a cycle, and we'll see what happens. Well, good morning. We're back here with the incubator this morning. I just wanted to check on it, make sure that the humidity was good. Our eggs are doing great now. So mark your calendars three weeks from now. There'll probably be a video talking about what we get from this hatching. Should be a fun year full of hatching. We'll be doing geese, quail, chickens, and some ducks. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we're also going to be getting some more animals pretty soon here, sooner than later. But it might not be what you think. It's not a cow. It's something smaller than that. So, stay tuned for that. We'll talk to you all later.